Hi, welcome to JJ's Productions, and we're back with another Stoke City vlogcast. With me as always is Jan. How are you doing? I'm okay, thanks, son. Hi, everyone. I hope you're all okay. Right. Wow, where do we start? <laughs> dear, dear. Positives. How about we start with the positives? The we positive. scored two goals. Yeah, we scored two goals. I didn't even celebrate. I was going to say, I mean, I wasn't particularly over the moon. I know that sounds crazy when you score, but I thought... Well, we just looked at one another. Yeah, I think we were in a bit of shock, if anything. Yeah. You know, I mean, I know McLean scored in the midweek, but I think we were a bit surprised to score. Yeah, yeah, I was shocked. Um, but just something in my gut told me, don't get too excited. Yeah, I think that is actually a fair way of describing it. Yeah, and my gut was right. It's because a- they come right back in it. And the only surprise of the match is Rotherham didn't win. Yeah, I'm in complete agreement there because I think part of the reason why we both kept our expectations down is simply put, Rotherham were the best team from start to finish. They were. You know, I know we scored the two goals, but I think both of them were against the run of play. Yeah. Whereas Rotherham, credit to them, they were on the front foot most of the match. You know, when we're listening, because unfortunately we are listening at the moment, and you're just hearing, you know, Rotherham have just had a chance and you're thinking... What what's going on? Yeah, <laughs> you know. So I, I mean, I can them. only afford Rotherham. I mean, last episode we did discuss the fact that they've not got a great away record. I mean, mm. what was it? One win in the last two or three years in the championship. Yeah. Well, you know when yeah. they've been in the championship. So I've got to applaud them for the mentality yeah. to actually nearly get the win because yeah. I think you know, rightfully so. <laughs> they're probably scratching their heads wondering how they didn't get the win. Well, I turned the radio off. I'd had enough. You know, I just couldn't stand any more of it. And I just... Well, I was just deflated. OK, so I'm going to open up a bit of discussion, but Sam Klukas, he got a goal, yet a consensus on Twitter is that he didn't do anything other than score a goal. Now, I've heard some people describe him as the current boo boy, you know, and it's all to do with that thing where... He cupped his ears to his to the Stoke fans as if to say, well, what are you booing about? And I think the trouble is, you do something like that when you haven't really been here long enough to earn a moment like that, if that makes sense, yeah. to sort of have a bit of credit in the bank, as they say. I think that is what has done him with the Stoke supporters, in that if he does anything wrong now in any game since then, he's not going to get a bit of sympathy. No. So I'm... The thing is with Stoke is don't like cocky players. Yeah. And I wouldn't even say it was cocky based on what I heard. It's more like he was fed up, you know, a bit like, mm. come on, stop being like this, just get behind us. And I think the Stoke fans didn't like it because we have had naff times. I mean, I'm on Twitter after games and I'm desolate yeah. trying to, you know, talk about the match. Well, Mother did actually write on Twitter this week um, in reply to Adam Bolton, is it? Yeah, on Twitter, yeah. And. Um, you know, he made a comment and I just said, I've supported Stoke for 53 years now and this isn't the worst I've seen him. No. You know, I've seen him a lot, lot worse than this. So it's no surprise to me. I know that the different teams and different eras and everything, but I have seen Stoke like this before. You know, and it's just no surprise. Well... Just moving forward a little bit, one of the key talking points after the match was the fact that Nathan Jones got booed by the Boothen end on the way off. And especially considering he went to them to applaud them, I must admit I found that quite odd. I mean, the way I see it is, and I have discussed this on Twitter, so anyone who, you know, happens to follow me on Twitter, you know, chime in again as well, that I feel like... I've got belief in Nathan Jones to actually take us forward. Yet... The trouble is, I'm not actually seeing anything in performances, in individual performances, that makes me think, okay, this is what he wants. You know, the fullbacks is part of what I can tell. You know, it's like, I can imagine he wants Edwards and another young fullback to be the cornerstones of the team. But I can't really work out, like, a style of play or how he wants us to defend, how he wants us to attack. It's... I keep getting the same argument thrown back at me, which is, it's not his squad, he hasn't got the players to play how he wants. Yet, I'm thinking to myself, we're now at the end of the season, 
why, you know, and I'm talking about the end of the season as in there is literally nothing else to play for. Yeah, yeah. Why not just take a little risk and just say, you know what, um, you and the academy, you, you, come here, and just put yeah. them in the team. And I know it might be that this player, I'm not even naming them just to try and, you know, make it generic, but it, they might not be ready. But surely it's better to get the team who he wants, you know, the players he wants to keep he obviously into wants the system he wants them to keep. I mean, he's going to get rid of all the dead wood, isn't he? I mean, he won't admit to that publicly, but I would say, yeah. He wants a young team that he can manufacture, if that's the right word. I don't know if it's a... It seems right, the word. Yeah. He wants a team that he can... Mould. Mould. I mean, I'm good. for instance, right, I'm looking at a youth player who's just popped in my head, Trey Pemberton, right? I think that's his name anyway. Correct me if I'm wrong. And the way I see it is, he's doing okay in the youth team, but he's probably not anywhere near ready for the first team. So yeah. I can understand why there might be reluctance. Yet, yeah, I'm looking at the likes of McLean, who he seems to... It's very hard to describe my feelings on McLean because it's a case of, like, he scored that goal against Swansea and you think, okay, he's got a good shot on him. But he doesn't do it anywhere near enough you don't think he creates enough chances yet he's up there in the assists he's such a weird player yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe yeah, him yeah you can't put your finger on him really you know he's not good but he isn't as bad as people would want you to believe yeah. <laughs> and, and I can't I'm going back to Pemberton for just a second because I think why not just give him a couple of games in whatever shape Jones wants to play I'm saying Pemberton it could be anyone in that youth academy and just say right this is how I want this team to play next season even if you aren't ready lad this is what I want you to be working yeah. on in the youth academy, so that you've got a chance to play in this system yeah. when you get through. But yeah. for whatever reason, we aren't giving that a go. Well, I've seen all the comments on Twitter, and it's not very often I comment, as you know. It's just the odd one. And I've seen everyone saying, Jones out, Jones out. Well, I think that's a load of rubbish, to be honest. Rome we, wasn't built in a day. We can't keep on changing managers like we are doing. You know, we've had Hughes, Rowett, and now Nathan Jones. We've got to give him a chance. I mean, for the record, we didn't even... Uh, you didn't mention Paul Lambert. Oh, then. And you know, Paul Lambert, yeah. You know, it's like I say, it's been that big a yeah. turnover, and you look at it and you think, Jones was doing something good at Luton. The fact that they're 99% certain to get promoted yeah. but as yeah. champions, I think that's a sign that... He's yeah. done well there. I know that, obviously, I can't remember the guy who's in charge of Luton right now, but, you know, obviously they've carried on since he left. But he built something there to begin yeah. with. I mean, he isn't happy with the pensioners that we've got. Yeah, you this know, is what I don't and get. I hate to use that word, <laughs> but, this but is what they I are mean. near the end of the career. I'm sorry, I'm sorry I can't keep my mouth shut on this one. I completely agree with what you're saying, but why on earth did he play Ashley Williams at fullback? Even now, it is making my head blow up asking that question. <laughs> I haven't got a clue. Especially as you've got Bauer on the bench. I just didn't understand it. And, well, I'm at a loss for words. You know, I just can't answer that question. I said to Josh when we saw that he was, you know, in that position, I said... I can imagine Jones just saying in the dressing room, you know, or on training, has anybody ever played fullback? And Williams put his hand up. Well, yeah, when I was a teenager, at such and such. Well, go on, you'll do then. I mean, uh, one of the biggest criticisms William has had, sorry, Williams has had this season is that he's not got any pace. So what do we do? We put him in the most pace-reliant position on the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> Then well, you've got the op opposite fullback, Martin Zindio isn't a natural fullback as well. So that one important position on both sides that Jones really wants to focus on, we put two people who aren't suited there. With a laughing stock, really. I mean, this is where I have had my frustrations the past week or so, yeah. because Jones has made some really bizarre calls. Mm. You know, and it's like I've said, I've got faith in him. It's actually quite irritating because I think if I didn't have faith in him, it'd be much easier to criticise him. I well, think the thing is as well, we're in the position where we are, that we're not going up, we're not going down, we're just stuck there. Yeah. And this is a time where he could, as, as Josh said, Josh said, put the 
them from the academy in and see how they work. I'm sure they can't be as bad as this lot, what we're playing. I mean, you're not telling me that Tom Edwards is the only right back in our youth system no who way. is capable of playing for the first team. No way. Or that Nathan Collins couldn't have just played 90 minutes there just as like, OK, I know you're a centre-back and you won't make that your position, but do you want to make your full debut at full-back just for a run out? Yeah. You know, surely there is some other option than Ashley Williams. If anyone can actually explain that to me. As a 4-4-2 or whatever four, back four shape we played at the weekend and can say, yes, Williams was the right choice there and this is why I will listen to you. Well, but, I hope you can explain it because... I'll have a nervous breakdown trying to work it out. I Ali. can't <laughs> explain it to you because I'm at a loss myself. Ashley Williams at right back. I could have cried when I saw it. I mean, he's out of puff when he, walk, he goes from the you know, the penalty spot to the halfway line. I mean, I have sympathy with Williams here because I'm thinking to myself, who puts him there? I just don't know what went through Nathan's head. I don't, honestly. I mean, why not? I'm sorry, I'm sticking on this for a bit, but why not play a back three? Have, say, Williams, Bath and Barton, Shawcross, or, I don't know, Shawcross, Barton, Martins, Indy, or whatever. (laughs) There's got to be another back three combination that was better than that back four. I just don't know, Josh. I've got no answers, love. And I'm if not... you have got any answers out there, <laughs> listen, please tell Josh, because I can't understand him like this. I- I'm sure you're not, because I'll be honest, I could talk about this for another 20 minutes and I'd have to record another fo- bit of the game for f- footage. Right, Ian, we start for Middlesbrough. They've won 17, they've drawn 13, and they've lost 12. They're currently in 7th. We're in 16th. Top score is... No. Asomba Belonga. <laughs> Rita Asomba Belonga. I got it nearly right. Yeah, nearly. And he's on 11 goals. But from the 2nd of March, they lost seven on the trot. And both Josh and I thought it might be the demise of uh, Tony Pulis at the time. But they've upped the game again. They've won the last two, haven't they? Won the last two. And they look as if they're back on target again. Just in time for playing us. <laughs> well, I'll admit, it sort of feeds into predictions, which I'm going to save for later, but I'm not optimistic about this at all. Forget team selections, you know. He could play Juf at centre-half, and I, I wouldn't disbelieve it now, to be honest. But, Luke, he could put <laughs> Juf in goal, and I'd believe it. But the way I'm looking at it is, you could, we could actually play a sensible starting eleven, and against Tony Pulis, I would still back his team to get the victory for the simple reason he is. It's as if he jinxed Stoke City the moment mm. he left, and I'm not just talking this spell. I'm talking about when he left the first time yeah, as well. Yeah. And I'm going to say, I know we had the ninth place finishes under use and. Don't get me wrong, I know it wasn't all bad, but whenever Tony Pulis came into town, you just knew he was going to, at the very least, get a draw. And God help, try and go the, away from home and get a result at this place. So, Well, I'm <laughs> just hoping that Stoke live up to what they've always lived up to in the Prem, and now that when they play the top teams, they cause a shock. And I'm just hoping that that, that happens on Friday. I mean, I'd just hope for the nil-nil myself in that... You know, you could sort of imagine it, you know, Tony Pulis with his traditional four centre-offs and us with our unorthodox four centre-offs. You know, I could easily imagine us both cancelling each other out. Look, confusing. So, <laughs> confused Tony Pulis, that's his bread and butter. <laughs> Luke, if he just shakes the old team up and, I don't know, puts Shawcross as a striker, you know, and... <laughs> Yes, you do. It'll confuse Tony Pulis. I'm still at the, that point as well. Ryan, why on earth did you say you were the fittest you'd ever been? I oh, know. Poor guy. I do feel sorry oh. for him. I really do, because he's having a bad time with this back, and I suffer with my back myself, and it's not nice. I think... You know, and whatever's wrong with him, I wish they'd just come out and tell us... Speaking for yourself, if you say to yourself, oh, I'm having a good day, do you think that it's sort of like that he was trying to sort of make himself feel better by saying it and then next thing you know, boop, 
he's gone for a game or two. Well, it can't be that bad wherever's wrong with his back because I couldn't go run around a football field for 90 minutes I with mean, my back. The fact that he played at the weekend suggests it isn't serious. You know, yeah. he didn't need a month off or anything like that. But There's something it, that keeps tweaking. Yeah, it, it's one of those where I can't help but think, if we're keeping Ryan for next season, which by all accounts it seems like we're going to do, why not wrap him up in cotton wool now for the rest of the season, let his back just settle again? You know, maybe that's just me being overprotective of him, but, you know, yeah. I'm here with Nathan Collins again. You know, the lad didn't do bad against Swansea, no, yet he didn't no. even make the bench. Well, as I say, we're in a position where we can do anything now because nothing can hurt us. We are where we are and give Ryan a rest, as Josh just said, and play one of the others like uh, Collins well in a game like this at the weekend I wouldn't mind us resting him for the fact that it's going to be a battle I mean Brett Sombolonga is I don't know how to describe him he comes across as a bit of a tough player yeah, but yeah. I get the impression he isn't I imagine if I said that Middlesbrough fans would say you know what he is a bit soft you can probably roll around with him so yeah, I'm not going to commit to that comment, but middle sport in general are going to be tough. That's how Tony Pulis builds his teams. So in a game like that, I think if we've got injury doubts, just leave them out. So yeah, if Ryan's yeah. still 50-50 over his back, start Send someone him on holiday early, that's what I say. Well, the way I see it is, even on the bench, just let him rest yeah, it up. Don't yeah. put him on if you don't need to. Put the fittest possible players out. Send Williams back to where you come from, Everton, did you come from? Yeah, he's actually out of contract. By the way, that was a headline today. I haven't done in the news for a bit. Um, in the news, Williams has said that he doesn't know what's going to happen with his Stoke City future after the end of this season. He's blinking going. That's where he's going. Now, this is the interesting On your thing. Bike. That the fact that he played him at fullback, I'm wondering if part of his thought process was, is he capable of doing another season at Stoke? You know, I am actually curious if um, that is maybe what Jones was thinking, that maybe he's got a role next season and he wants to sign him on a one-year contract or something. I mean, that's the only thing I can think. He wanted to see if he could play out of position, if he got a future at Stoke. And the answer is no. I, I'm, I'm still on it. I'm still on the Williams thing, but it, it's the only explanation I've got. I mean, the fact that Williams has come out and said he doesn't know what's going on, You'd like to think that if Jones had said, you're not in my plans, he would have worked that out by now. But by all accounts, there's still a question mark over it. <laughs> well, put it this way. If he hadn't been in his plans, I'd have just said, I'm, I'm going. I'm going to start my holidays early. I mean, he can't do that, you know, breach of contract and all that. But I get your point. He could have basically said, right, why, why, why are you keeping me if you're not going to yeah, play me? Yeah, So, you know, it's the whole thing is peculiar. I, I, I'm sure... I think it was a peculiar signing to start with. No offence to Ashley. I think he's had a good career at Swansea, but... He, you know, Anna, we must here. have another fallback somewhere. We must have. I mean, I'm looking at the, the youth team and thinking, Josh Tymon, if I'm right, as a right-footed left-back. Couldn't he have done a shift at right-back? You never know, he might have even done better there. I'm honestly at a loss, and that is that takes something with me and Stoke, because I'm usually fairly competent at working out what a manager might be thinking so yeah this has just lost me yeah I'm just completely disappointed in the whole season yeah I I think if you're winding it all down that is what it is I mean we've got the Norwich game to cover we've got the uh, Millwall Millwall and and the Sheffield Sheffield United yeah we've got those three games left and I don't know about you but the only reason I'm doing it is because I want to finish the vlog you know, yeah, I want to make yeah. sure the first season is complete. Yeah. But as far as actual talking points, we're actually talking about negatives because, I mean... There's no positives. You know, I would actually like to have a positive spin on things because it's so so dreary when you keep going on about the negatives. But I, and if you've got some positives, leave them in the comments. Just remind us what we're yeah. playing for or what's still I to mean, look at. I was at. convinced at the start of the season that we would go straight back up. I convinced myself that we would. And after that Leeds match, all our confidence went. I mean, 
Before the Leeds match, I, th I knew it'd be a tough season because the Championship, as it's been proven, is not an easy league. You know, you're not going to go unbeaten. You're not going to have massive points tallies or whatever some Stoke supporters are imagining. But I did think we'd go up in some manner. Yeah. You know, I thought maybe as runners-up or maybe in the playoffs. But like, like I say, it's just got nowhere near. Just and excuse me a minute, folks. Dotty, shush. Yeah, we've got a puppy and she's just decided to start whining because uh, she has been on her own a while. Yeah, so I'm bitterly disappointed. And it's no good saying I'm not. But, as I said previously, it isn't the worst that I've seen them. No, I mean, I can't deny it. It is the worst I've seen Stoke. You know, I mean, I've only been a football supporter in general since 2006. You know, and I've always been a Stoke supporter. My mum raised me up like that, but I didn't really get football. So, you know, that's sort of how that works out. But it is disappointing for me because even when I got into football we were just on the cusp of the playoffs you know and we, yeah. I think we just finished eighth in that season in the championship so yeah even then I've only been used to upward trends yeah so yeah, yeah it's a little bit hard for me to take but it, the way I see it is if Nathan Jones does the basics right just picks a n nice simple team you know square pegs and square holes round pegs and round holes I've got nothing to complain about because yeah. then it's the players. It's when Jones is making problems for himself that I start questioning him. Yeah. Because I think if you're doing this with, you know, these players who aren't really yours, are you going to do the same with players who are yours? I mean, I'm surprised at the booth and end uh, booing him, actually. Um, because, OK, we've had the losses and we shouldn't lose against Rotherham. I know that. and But I'm so surprised at him that... He, they booed him when he was applauding them. Yeah. You know, it doesn't like class. Up. They are the the new booth men to say, oh, you know, I mean, it's a new era of booth men, um, because they would never have done that in the olden days. You well, know, to be honest, half them would have probably gone to Delilah's and had a chat with the bloke. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and this is just the way it is these days that managers are getting booed but we certainly don't want to get rid of him we've got to get some normality back in the club yeah and i think the best way to do that is stick with the manager even if it doesn't work out because the thing is just supposing we give jones another year on top of this so it's like till the end of next season yeah even if we don't get promoted then you can say at that point, right, these were all Jones's players, he's rooted out the ones he didn't want, he's put in the ones he does want, and you can build on something solid. Whereas right now, you've got a few of Hughes's players, a few of, uh, well, you've got the legacy of Lambert's players, if you like, yeah. the Bar Mar Baron and I, and then you've got uh, Rowett signings, and one or two of uh, Jones's. I mean, you've even got one, or no, just one now, of uh, Tony Pulis, so... We really need to sort of get all being Jones, or at least yeah, the majority, yeah. because it's very. I, I think we've just up. got to give him the benefit of the doubt and see what players he brings in, and what dead wood he gets rid of. And there's quite a lot of dead wood he's got to get rid of. Well, Middlesbrough fans, I do apologise if we haven't talked about your club too much. We seem, if I've talked about you, I've probably talked about Tony Pulis more. Um, I'll leave a link in the top right corner for the uh, reverse fixture preview because I know I talked a fair bit then about Aidan Flint and co, so you never know. Maybe that'll be more up Yali. Uh, but as far as the game on Good Friday, what are your thoughts? Well, I've gone 2-1 Stoke. I can't go in the other. I can't go against them. My heart is going nil-nil Stoke. Yeah. But my head thinks that it could be something to nil for Stoke so uh, I am not optimistic of a goal let alone a win for Stoke no I've, I've gone 2-1 I've got to hold my face even at this uh, you know when there's no good and no bad to come out of it well thank you for listening folks if you enjoyed this episode please leave it a like and subscribe to the channel for future episodes we're back for the Norwich game on Monday so before then we'll see you okay see you folks bye bye everyone <laughs>